Welcome back to my channel. It's great to see you all again. In this video, I want to share my thoughts on the REI Kingdom Cot 3. Now, REI did not give this to me. I bought this with my own money uh, about six months ago. Over the past couple of years, as I'm getting older, I found myself shopping around for a cot. I guess in my later years, I'm starting to grow tired of thin sleeping mats and I wanted something more. So to start off, let's talk about the size of this cot. This is not a small cot. If you're looking for something compact, something easy to carry, something that can fit in a very small car, probably want to stop the video right here because this is not the cot for you. When folded up, it is 33 by 32 by eight and a half inches. So yeah, this is not a small cot. I have a Toyota 4Runner and it's a little challenging with the seats down to get this in and out of the back of the 4Runner. And this certainly is not a lightweight cot coming in at 20 pounds. Let's unfold this now. There are two sets of legs on one side and a third on the other. So I always start on the side with the two legs bring it up. So an important note about this cot and probably my biggest critique is that the legs don't lock in place. As you're unfolding it and you're moving it around, expect the legs to fold back in on you. It's really kind of irritating. There are knobs on each side that you will need to turn to loosen up so you can start opening it up just like so. Let's fold out the third set of legs down like this and then it opens up like this. This folds out to 82 by 31 and a half by 14 inches. This is a good size cot that will fit most people. A feature I do like is on the third set of legs beneath the head, you can actually open up this little lock on each side and expand out the legs like so which will help elevate your head if that suits your sleeping preferences. There is padding all the way around the edges. I really like this. I've spent more time than I care to think about sleeping on military cots, where you could always feel that metal bar on the side. Always very uncomfortable. I really appreciate the extra cushioning. Now I talked about the legs folding in as you move this around. See, as I kind of do this, all right, it does that. Another little issue that I have is with the feet. As you're moving this around, the feet will commonly tip up on the side like this. If you're not careful and you just fold this down and then you probably lay down on top of this, I am really skeptical with the quality, the build quality of the feet that it's gonna hold your weight for any length of time. I think they're at a higher risk of snapping off. So before you hop onto the cot, do a once around and make sure that all the feet are flat down like that. Now I've only taken this camping once this year, but I have used it a lot. Now my house isn't the best during the summer here in the valley. The upstairs gets just miserably hot. It doesn't even matter if we have the AC running, it just doesn't stay cool upstairs. So for most of the summer, me and my partner have been using our cots because she has one just like me and sleeping downstairs on them. So I've actually got a lot of time this year sleeping on this cot. And I will say it is actually very comfortable. Now, the one time I took it camping was great to be completely honest. I really liked not having to think about rocks or uneven ground underneath my sleeping bag that would keep me up at night. And that's one thing I liked about a cot was I could just put this out and not really care if there's any kind of rocks or stumps or anything in the ground that would be uncomfortable. Also, I like having the storage space underneath the cot. I could put a backpack underneath there, my iPad, camera gear. So having a cot does help a little bit with space management in a tent. I normally sleep with the legs about half extended on the front. I do like my head elevated a little bit above rest of my body. So I really, really appreciate that feature. So my only real critique about this whole cot, other than the size, okay, I knew when I bought it, it was gonna be big, and I knew it was gonna be hard to transport. So when I take it out, it's on days where it's just me or me and my partner, 
but not the kids. If the kids are coming with, then forget it. This stays at home and we're sleeping on mats or an air mattress. My overall score about this cot is a four out of five. The legs folding in when you're trying to move this around is really, really annoying. I mean, it happens every single night when I have to set this up. And I've gotten pretty good at it, but there's always a moment where I have to go around, get underneath, and pull a set of legs back out because they folded in on me every single night. So it's gotten a little bit annoying, so I can only give this a four to five. If they make locking legs, do something about the feet, five out of five. I think with this cot, there's not gonna be any gray area. Either it suits you or it doesn't. There's no in between. So if you're checking this cot out and you're kind of on the fence, you're not really sure, it may not be the right cot for you. This isn't so much a review. I'm not paid to do this. I purchased this, I use it, and I'm just giving you my two cents. And I hope this is the kind of information that helps you make informed decisions before you go make your next purchase. And that's all I have for this video. Thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you again next time.